ANOVA stands for Analysis of Variance. When do you need the Analysis of Variance? It's an extension of an independent group t-test. So a t-test would be comparing two samples. Is the mean of these two statistically significant? That is, the t-test is great if you have two sets of observations. But if you have more than two, like here, the t-test would be the first column versus the second column, then the first one versus the third column, and the second one versus the third. So you introduce a lot of extra error. I explained that here. If you take a probability of 5% error chance, then that you will ha have at least one significant result is 1 minus p. So if you have three sets of data, this would be the chance for having at least one significant result, which evaluates to this instead of 0.05, which is the most common one. So uh, it is very wise to use the analysis of variance. The analysis of variance has a few conditions. You need a normal distribution of the means. If that is not the case, how, how do you test for that? The normality test I discussed in this video. You can transform data so they become normally distributed. I discussed that in another video. But if there is a normal distribution and if you have equal variances between the groups, that means there is no statistically significant difference between them, then you can use the analysis of variance. It does not matter whether the sample sizes may vary. So you can have one set that has more items than another set. If none of these conditions apply, then there is only one hope left, the chi-square test, which I discussed here. What does the analysis of variance test do? It calculates an F value. And the critical F value says if you take a 5% error chance, the chance that you are in this area to the right or way to the left of the critical F value, then there is a significant difference between the data sets. But I have a 95% confidence that the actual F value will be inside this yellow range. So how can you test all of that? ANOVA is complicated maybe to explain in the background. I'm not going to do too much. Let's say I have three sets of data. So I, I can't use the t-test. Yeah, I could use it three times. But I'm going to use the analysis of variance, what it does in the background. I'm not going to discuss that extensively. You can find that in my book, Excel for Scientists, or the CD-ROM Excel for Scientists. But I will just give it here because you can have Excel do this kind of calculations. And all you have to analyze is what is the actual F value and what is the critical F value. If the actual value is less than, is smaller than F critical, in other words, if the F actual value is somewhere here, less than F critical, then we say the differences between those three data sets is probably random. We have a 95% confidence that that difference in means is random. You could also look at the p-value. The p-value, the probability that these things happen by mere randomness, is very high. So how do you get all of this done? Uh, before we go into that kind of test, I have to tell you one limitation of the ANOVA test in Excel. Let's say you had all this information, four samples. This is what your ANOVA test gives you. In this case, we could F, actual F is far outside the critical range. So there are differences between those four samples that are significantly different.
but it does not tell you which data set is significantly different. If you want to know that, you have to do a little more work. This is what Excel does for you, but it does not do this. So, just in case you are interested, you could say sample 1 versus 2 versus 3 versus 4. We are going to use the F-test. The F-test is a very simple test for variances. Array 1 versus array 2. I am making the first array absolute because I'm going to copy it to the right. The second array is sample 2 and I make that relative. I don't lock it so it will change into C into D I and I copy it to the right. That would be the F test and then you do something similar for sample 2 etc. So that was the F test that says that there is a high probability that the variances between sample 1 and 3 are random. But now the t-test. You have to do that six times. The t-test does something similar as the f-test, but now it uses the t-value between two arrays. Remember, t-test is always between two sets of observations. I make it two-tailed, and I use the t-test. And type 2, that means there is maybe unequal variance or equal variance. The decision is hard to make at this point. You, that depends on your F-test. So the problem is, as I discussed before, that when you combine things, you get into this problem. So what do we have to do? We have to apply what they call a Benferroni correction. It reduces the false positives. And a simple rule of doing that is you multiply these results by 6 because you have 6 pairs of observations. So this one has just a simple formula. Take that cell and multiply by 6. And what you find out after you do that, you will see that this one, the difference between 3 and 4 in means is very likely to be random. But all the other cases are in the very low probability range. It's very unlikely that that happens by mere coincidence. So only the difference between 3 and 4 is significant. So now, how do you get that ANOVA result? So far, I have been doing a single factor analysis. This time I have two factors. I have a nutrient level and I have a pH level. So I need a two-factor analysis. All you have to do is you make sure that you have your data analysis tool available under data. If it's not available, you have to go to File, Options, make sure you go to the Add Ins, O, and make sure that the analysis tool pack is activated. You have it on your machine, but it may not be activated. Once it's activated, you go to the data tab, data analysis, and you go to ANOVA, either single factor, two factor with replication, or two factor without replication. What does that mean? With replication, that's the one we did here, means that you repeated that observation several times. Without replication would be an instance where you have a mean of observations or just one observation. Okay. So when you do that, it says what is your input range? I am including the labels. How many rows per sample? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I use a 5% error chance in your output range, click it on, click in the white box and say I want it somewhere there. And when I click on OK, it gives me this result. Again, how do you read it? 
in this case, because we have a two-factor replication situation, it shows us the difference in sample, which means in this case the nutrient level, that is highly significant. The, F, the actual F value is outside the F critical range. So the nutrient level makes a significant difference. In the columns, that is the pH level, does not make a significant difference. And then finally, you can also check the interaction of the two, which is significantly different. But again, don't take both conclusions at the same time, for then you introduce a higher error range, unless you correct for that. Another example. This is also a two-factor analysis. Frozen samples, fresh samples with different uh, solutions, with different concentrations. Again, I did a two-factor analysis with replication because every set has multiple observations. And I find in this case only one significant difference, the difference in concentration. The F value is way outside the critical value. One more. It's definitely two-factor. Diabetics, non-diabetics, normal, overweight, whatever those ranges mean. And I measured the diastolic blood pressure. It is a two-factor analysis with replication. Again, I find two significant ones. So it depends on your hypothesis. Are you checking the hypothesis? Does being a diabetic make a difference, yes or no? One more. In this case, the hemoglobin A1c measurements for people who have used three months of insulin and who have dieted for three months, exercise for three months. Don't get fooled, it's a single factor analysis. And again, it turns out that the difference is not quite significant. It's a borderline case, so the p-value is just a little bit more than 5%. So it is still possible that this happens by mere coincidence, these differences. It's a borderline case. Again, it goes very quickly. You just select all of that. You go to data, data analysis, in this case a single factor. And then you put in your information. Again, you need, may need to know much more about statistics. So I, I put here a whole chapter on statistical analysis. You can find it in my book or on the CD-ROM. The CD-ROM is more user, it guides you through the process. The book has exercises also, but probably the CD-ROM is more interactive. GenesisPC.com will show you how to do statistical analysis.